This is the SAU Report, a program featuring interviews with the faculty, staff, students, and alumni of Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia. Welcome. I'm Charles Lawson. And I'm David Parkerson. Today we'll be discussing the Agriculture Department here at Southern Arkansas University. Our guest today is Dr. Charlotte, the Chairman of the Agriculture Department here at this university. Mr. Tollett, um, exactly what are your duties and responsibilities? I'm Chairman of the Agricultural Department of Southern Arkansas and University and also Director of the Farm, which is a part of the laboratory exercises of the University. Um, I understand you also do a little, you teach too? I teach every semester, every, every semester, summer and fall and winter. Professor Tollett, uh, how would you rank uh, the SAU Ag Department in comparison to, um, say, Ag Departments and other, on other college campuses? We feel that we have one of the best Ag schools, and I'd be prejudiced if I didn't say that, that anywhere in this area we're getting children, young people from Georgia and from North Carolina, from Michigan, from Texas, and a lot of other places. We're at reaching out now and getting students that we've never gotten before in the northern part of the state. We, can, we have one of the larger ag education departments in the state of Arkansas, and we've gone from about 90 students uh, in late 1990 to over 300 in this last semester. So we've grown rapidly. It's considered one of the better schools in the Arkansas. Certainly there are other universities, but we think we've got one that's equal to anybody in the state of Arkansas. So exactly how many animals are raised on the farm here? We have a number of animals. We have about 200 beef cattle. We have about 150 dairy cattle. Uh, our hog populations are, are down today, but we're rebuilding a new hog facility, and so we will increase the population to about 1,000 head of all times. We have 50,000 broilers, and we have a few head of horses, and then we have all other allied activities with the farm. What kind, I mean, who uh, purchases the products that, uh, that the SAU farm produces? We sell all our products uh, in different ways, but uh, it's a state mandate that you sell most of your products where it can be in a bidding process. So we take all of our livestock to, the local, uh, to auctions in different places. Uh, we can take USDA figures and take those pigs to, a local, to slaughterhouses throughout the state. The broilers are grown under contract with Conagra because they're the ones in this area. And then the other uh, things such as corn and so forth, we sell locally uh, using USDA figures. Exactly how much land does the uh, campus own? We have about 663 acres in the farm or 700 acres in the campus, but we have about 663 acres on the farm and then we have some a land that Albemarle has allowed us to use because we're doing some research work with it and we're doing have some land that the city has that we use. What kind of crops do we raise on these acres? Most of our the land is used for what we call animal agriculture although we do have uh, different types of pastures and forages we do sustainable agriculture studies where we are doing garden projects and and determining how we can conserve energy for the good in case that sometimes that the energy supply of the nation gets short. We, are, we grow corn, watermelons, cantaloupes, uh, berries, a number of things like that. We also put in things like uh, hay crops and hay grazer and things to supplement feed for our livestock. Mm. Um, the money made from the purchase of the product, does it go directly to the farm or to the campus or is it evenly distributed out bo through both? The monies we generate, we live under a budget. Every year I have to put in a budget. They give me a, so much money to operate the farm on and we tell them how much income we're going to bring in. The monies are then given to the university. We do not use the monies that we generate on the farm to re utilize on the farm. We live under a budget, like, just like every department here on the campus does. How much exactly do you make? We run anywhere from $170,000 to $200,000 a year, and that's given to the general fund at the university. 
exactly what are some of the steps you take to prevent various diseases? Um, like what are some of the vaccination attempts? Because um, I heard that there's a lot of uh, sometimes contaminated meat and situations like that. What is that, are some of the steps you take to ensure that um, the meat's safe, the milk is um, safe? We follow the good manufacturing pro practices of every drug or anything else that we use on the, the farm. There is a label, nothing is used outside of the use that's given for the label. Then any injections or anything are given are given under the auspices of the label. If there is something that's not uh, of use that we know anything about, we use the brain and the veterinarian to make those decisions. We do consult the veterinarians for things like this. The biggest thing that say keeps our medicine costs low and keeps us from getting in trouble is that we we use sanitation. We try to keep good sanitation. We try to keep healthy animals at all times. What kind of steps do you uh, take to prevent uh, diseases spreading uh, from spreading to other animals and to, even to humans? Biosecurity is really important for us. We, when we bring a new animal in on the farm, they're quarantined, put to a place that no other animals are. That way we can observe them over a given period of time, usually a month to 60 days before they're put in with our other animals. Uh, we are, when we buy an animal, they have to be uh, brucellosis free, they have to be TB free, and, and we require certain things that are genetically free of certain diseases. That way we can control any type of diseases that come on our place. We also prevent people, and you'll see a lot of signs on our farm saying, you're not allowed to, to go on these premises because our fish in these ponds, and primarily the reason being, besides for safety, is that we don't want people to, that may have been on somebody's farm and had a contaminated animal come on our farm and then contaminate our animals, and we wouldn't know how they got there. So we are biosecurity conscious. Mm -hmm. um, do our, 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 our animals mostly produce for food or the products they produce? We, we produce most of our animals for, first we use them for laboratory practices in all our classes. That's what the real reason this farm is. It is an extension of our classroom laboratories. And the animals that we produce, we keep a, a great percentage of them, particularly the females, uh, to replenish our herds. The others that we sell are, are to bring in income, which goes into the general fund. What kind of care do you give to these animals that you we, have on the farm? We use the latest technology that's available in, any, in the industry. Uh, we use mainly student labor to take care of the animals. We teach them by doing this. We teach them how to handle animals when they go out to, to work in the industries, so wherever they may go, or on their own farms. And we uh, observe them each day. We watch for the safety and the health of them. We feed them uh, with the latest technology. We try to make sure that they're uh, healthy, safe at all times. How many degrees are offered in the agriculture department here? We have three degrees. We have an ag business degree, which is one of the premier degree, degrees that we have. That is, the young people take a basic agriculture background and in, and in cooperation with the School of Business, we uh, have developed a program where that they get accounting and statistics and all the business courses necessary. Uh, our young people are sought by industry, by academia, by government agencies, and, and through the school uh, through that degree, we have instituted within the last year an agriculture sciences degree. That's for the kids that want to go into uh, scientific agriculture and pursue a graduate degree, and or become a veterinarian. The veterinary school now requires that the young person getting into vet school must have a four-year degree and we instituted it for those students, plus the students that want to go on and not be an ag business major, but they are, want to pursue a degree in scientific agriculture, such as research and genetics and physiology and endocrinology and biochemistry and all those. And then we have an ag agriculture education degree, which prepares young people to go out and teach in high schools in the, FF, in the future farmer or agriculture education programs. So we offer three premier degrees. We offer minor in horticulture for those young people that want to go and work in uh, things such as floriculture and, and uh, things that deal with plants. We also offer a 
pre-professional degree in forestry where they can take two years here and then transfer to a forestry school somewhere else. Well, what kind of uh, jobs can a graduate get uh, whenever they graduate with an ag degree? The job market has never been better. We had all our graduates this last year had five to seven offers, so they had to make a decision what they want to do. We had young people went into the uh, farm credit. We had young people went with AgriSciences Foundation. We had people that went into the big poultry companies, the swine companies. We had them go in extension. We've had them go into banking. Uh, there's, it's, the job, uh, jobs are endless for what they can do. There's so many jobs right now. And this last week, I've had requests for 10 people. We only have two graduating this summer, and they will kind of set their salaries, I imagine. Exactly how many scholarships are offered in the agriculture department? We offer, the, the scholarships are from, in the agriculture department come from our endowed foundation. We have a tremendously strong alumni group. They have come across, we have 49 scholarships that have come from ag donors. Now, several of these are based on the ACT score of 24 as for freshmen. I have I've been in the last year, our department has about 19 scholarships that we can give to upperclassmen. And so far, we've been able to fulfill each one is applied for an agriculture scholarship. You mentioned the FAA, I mean the FFA. Oh. What exactly is the FFA? FFA is a, the old term of Future Farmers of America. It was in every high school, it, it's been there for years. They, they've kind of changed it to modernize it to that. It's called agriculture education now. And that's for, to, in high schools that prepare young people uh, to go into careers in agriculture in some way. Uh, in our case, we have an FFA chapter here on campus. We have the only collegiate FFA chapter in the state of Arkansas, I think. There may be one in Jonesboro, but we have a real active collegiate FFA chapter. And this then, the young people in the collegiate FFA chapter, many of them become ag education teachers throughout the state and the nation. How many chapters do, how many FFA chapters is, are there in the state of Arkansas? I'm gonna guess a little bit, but uh, I would think there is probably close to 150. I know this, that there's just about every school in the state of Arkansas has an FFA chapter, and many of them like Bryant and Crossit and at Spring Hill are putting in new chapters. So every year we're having more and more chapters taken. And the reason this came about is because the uh, people in Kansas City and the people in Chicago were having truancy problems with their stu uh, people in schools. They put in FFA chapters, put in greenhouses, and the young people, such as the ones from Cabrini Green in Chicago, started working in the greenhouses and their truancy rates went down. So the schools went to examining what's happened, what's made this. And they have now have uh, said that this was purely due to the incorporation of something for young people to do in greenhouses, and then they sell the products. So these young people now have really taken on, and every major inner city school and major uh, cities are going to that. In fact, the president of the National FFA last year was a young black fellow from Chicago, down in the center of Cabrini Green, and he told everyone that he would the FFA is what made him leave the gang, and, been, and he will be a leader in our country one of these days. How many SAU Ag students are involved in the FFA chapter on campus? On campus, just about every SAU Ag student is a member of the FFA chapter Agri Club combination. That would be close to 300. Um. Exactly how has agriculture changed from when you graduated? I understand that uh, when you were a student here, you worked on the farm. Right. Exactly how much has it changed in use of like um, mechanization, um, the way the business is? Is there like any back any serious big changes? It's made a tremendous uh, changes. We still do some of the same chores that, that I did when I was a student back here but we have more modern technology to do things with. Our tractors are much more uh, computerized. Young people have to understand those. When I did it, it was a small Ford tractor, no computers I could work on them. Now you have to be technologically uh, capable to work on big tractors. 
our milkers. I milked her at 4 o'clock every morning, pay my way through school. We had to uh, hands put on the milkers and take them off and change them. And now we've got one of the most modern dairies, the only collegiate dairy in the state of Arkansas now. The University of Arkansas has gotten rid of theirs. Uh, Arkansas State's gotten rid of theirs. And we have what is called the ultimate in mechanization for dairies. All we have to do is put the milkers on the cows. When the, the cows have collars on that are computerized and it, the computer tells each cow as she comes in the barn how much feed she's going to get, then it takes the milk that she produces at night or morning and figures it up and converts it to how much feed she's supposed to get for the next milking. So it's hands off just about. Only thing we do is to put the milkers on, it automatically takes the milkers off. We didn't have laser technology when I was a student. All I had is an old tripod to look for measuring lines and so forth. And right now, Dr. Horn has the ultimate in laser technology where in ag engineering, young people can take this and they can uh, plow a whole field and level it with a laser, one person, where it used to take five or six people. And so our measuring buildings, this tells you how many feet you are, and so that. We've got new uh, soil testing equipment. Used to, we did it in actually nothing more than old jugs and so forth. Today, we've got uh, spectrophotometers and computer-assisted uh, analysis, automatic titration. So all the young people are getting to learn all this technology. So when they go out into the industry, they're prepared for the latest. Um, is the technology that we have here on campus uh, as state-of-the-art as uh, what they'd be dealing with uh, in the field? Ours is a state-of-the-art. It will be the latest. We're constantly buying new equipment each time. Thanks to the university, when they put in the lab fees, we take that money and we buy some new piece of equipment, which is the cutting edge of technology. And we've got, you know, we've got uh, pregnancy ultrasound machines that we can do all the pregnancy and muscle test and determine how much meat's an animal. The young people will be working with that. We're just buying new, every year, we're buying the latest in technology of something that is needed to teach them. For example, in, right now we've just got some new moisture testers teaching and with black lights teaching for microbiological uh, problems that occur in feeds. So they're getting all of this type of stuff. I understand that uh, you've traveled around the world. Have you noticed um, any like serious differences in the way our agriculture is in comparison to other countries? I was fortunate when I was a student here, I thought I dreamed of going somewhere. I never knew that as a student in SAU, I'd wind up living in Australia and Hong Kong, and South Africa and Mexico and all those places. And I worked with the basic agriculture industry as a technical uh, manager for research. You will find in some countries that they'll have just as good, a, uh, as good a research and do the same things that we do. Other things are less likely to be true. If you go into certain countries where they don't have the monies to buy all automated equipment, you'll still see the old time way of plowing and feeding and so forth. We just have to remember we in America are kind of fortunate. We don't spend very much money for food. Whereas in other countries, over 50, 60, 70% of their dollar goes into food and so the technological advances is what's made America what it is. If you go to Australia for example, I had books that uh, when I studied in graduate school that were written by Australians. They were they're very technically oriented. You go to England, uh, they clone Dolly. Uh, so yeah. they're, they're extremely uh, well versed. Yet you go into certain other areas and uh, you go in some, some countries and they still are doing the same things that we did 50 years ago. But that's all they can do because they don't have the funds to do it. That's kind of interesting. Um, that <laughs> reminds me of something. Do you think um, that farming will eventually start to go into doing a lot of cloning or do you think that was just a nice little incident? You we, science will continue. We already have uh, gene splicing that's taken place. Uh, we have Roundup herbicide, for example, which uh, cotton, they can put right on cotton, and they've cloned cotton in such a way that it, Roundup will not kill it, but it'll kill all other weeds around it. If it's handled correctly, we will always, we'll find that this type of technology will benefit 
to populations for years and years to come. Um, do you mostly use artificial insemination to, insem to inseminate your animals or natural insemination? We are going strictly to artificial insemination because we can purchase the semen and things are from bulls or boars or rams that are the top in the breeds. So we are trying to get the top animals here on the place and so that's the fastest way to do it. Now we certainly we keep some animals that certain animals you can artificially breed, they never will. So we keep a, a top bull or top ram or something to take care of those animals that don't. But generally speaking, we're going to AI full time. Is the job, I mean, have, have we had any students that graduated from here in the Ag Department that went off to other countries to do work? Oh, oh yeah, we've got students that gone everywhere uh, that's working in a lot of different places. We have some that's rather, you know, famous in that. Well, I can just name a few of them. Dr. Leonard Pike, who's a world famous vegetable uh, geneticist. He's the one that's, uh, that's made the, the new yellow carrot and the 1040 onion. Dr. Justin Morris is a world renowned wine authority. We've got uh, Dr. Tom Lovell, who is probably the world renowned aquaculturalist. We've got so many graduates that have done well and gone and are being used in other parts of the world. Uh, in, in certain periods of time. And yes, there are a lot of them have gone to other parts of the world. Can you describe, I mean, the differences between the, uh, uh, can you compare the differences between uh, the animals and crops that, uh, that we deal with in ag on the SAU campus to animals and crops that they'd be dealing with in other countries? Well, we, we have some of the same crops now. We don't have some, say we don't have rice in SAU. But we go over to the, the Red River Valley or we go up to Stuttgart with our kids and teach them what rice really is. You go into Philippines where the International Rice Institute is and uh, they're probably a little further along than we would, but we take that technology and train our young people with it and they, go, they can go to work in it. Uh, you go and we're probably the, one of the foremost leaders in and animal technology of any country in the world because we're way out front on a lot of things in that end of it. Uh, the poultry industry, United States, bar none, is probably the most efficient of any place in the world. We're probably the most efficient in, in, in producing a certain grain crops. You go into other areas and certain countries have a niche for something. We don't produce co coconuts, but uh, uh, we can grow so many other things that they can. So each country has a little niche for what they can do. But the United States is sort of looked on as the breadbasket of the world. Um, of all the um, ag fields out there, what made you say to pursue being a teacher, then later on being a chairman? Well, uh, I have a philosophy. I, I went with, I came to Southern Arkansas and taught for a year and then Dow Chemical asked me to go with them to become a technical director and ultimately a director of their research in the far in the far east. I have a philosophy that every young person ought to have to work for a business concern rather than go straight into teaching. And uh, young people wonder why we are successful putting our people into, into industry so easily and other schools are, have such a difficulty. I can tell you why. It's because we build up a rapport, people like myself and others, and in, I've had a business background, and so we teach more business than we're in it too because there's a difference in what you learn in a book. And if a young teacher comes, all he does is regurgitate what his professor said, but if he's been out on the firing line where the decisions have to be made, he can say, well, the book says this, but this means this will work better for you if you follow it. So well, that's I love to teach. Thanks for your, oh. thanks for your time, Mr. Tollett. This concludes another student forum of the Southern Arkansas University. I'm Charles Lawson. And I'm David Parkerson. Good evening, and thank you for tuning in. The SAU Report is a production of broadcast journalism students in the Department of Theater and Mass Communication at Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia. <laughs>